Hi, I'm Erin from Create, Dream and Paint. Today we are going to work on a fun project of a line and shape. You will need your paint supplies, pencil and eraser. Let's get started. So today we're talking about line and shape again. I know we might think we've been talking about this a lot, but it's really important when we get into our drawing classes we're going to be taking in this in this club. So I want to kind of discuss how we're using line and shape in this. So if you look, it is the shape of my hand, but it's created with a line. And then we're going to have some fun with those lines and create different shapes. I'm going to show you how. Okay, so you can use a piece of paper, a canvas, whatever substrate you're going to use today piece of cardboard, pretty much anything. And we're going to do a hamper like we did when we were little. And we're going to trace all the way around our hand. And I bet you anything your parents are going to want to keep this. We're big on handprint. Handprints, we have them from when you're little. And one day it's going to amaze you that the, that was your handprint. Okay, so we're going to go all the way around. And as we know, we're creating what? We are making a line. But with this line, we now, let's close it up. Now we have a shape. So what I'm going to do with my handprint is I'm going to go in and I'm going to create some other lines. So I'm going to put a line from here to here. And I want you to notice, as we add these lines, we're creating new shapes, right? We still have the shape of our hand, but now we're creating other shapes. Because we're making, we're enclosing something, like we're enclosing the shape with a line. Okay, I'm going to try and you just have fun with it. You can do this multiple times if you want. You put a couple handprints on or one handprint. It's gonna be interesting to see what everyone decides how to do, what to do. So what we're gonna do now is we've got our handprint and the lines. But let's look, what happens if we create lines outside of the hand? See how I put a line up to the finger? And I'll keep going with this line and maybe Create it so it's like this. Here's another shape. Okay, where else can I do this? I'm gonna try it here. I'm using my lines to create a shape. And you can have little shapes or big shapes. I'm going for the bigger shapes because we're gonna fill those shapes in with other shape lines and shapes. We're gonna have fun with this. and see how many designs you can make. Do a few. Okay, so now we have got our lines and our shapes. So make sure that you don't go over top of your handprint with the ones that are outside, because then we're not going to be able to see what we're doing next. Okay, I'm gonna grab my painting supplies and I'm gonna be back in just a moment. We're back, it's time for painting. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different than the picture here, and I'll explain it as we go. Okay, so I am gonna use super bright colors inside the shape of the hand, but we're going to look at these other shapes and change up the color. Usually I lighten colors or I dull them down a bit, but I'm not going to, and you'll see why in a little bit. So pick your favorite bright colors. Let's see what we can do. So I'm gonna just go in and start painting. So I'm gonna paint the inside of the hand first. So don't worry outside of the hand because that's gonna be something a little bit different we're gonna do. And it's gonna add to the painting at the end. So I picked this awesome turquoise. Oh, this is a fun color, but wow, it's bright. Usually I don't use such bright colors, but it's kind of fun to, 
to do stuff a little bit different than you usually do. So, so see what colors you can pick. I'm gonna do some turquoise, and I've got some yellow, and I've got some purple. And I'm gonna see how those look together. We're gonna use them just super bright. We're gonna go in, we're going to fill in the hand just like we would a coloring book. hope everyone is having so much fun with the lessons. I want to make sure everyone here knows though, if there's something you'd like to learn to paint, or kind of a, a art idea, just let me know because I'd like to be able to put in as many classes that you're going to really enjoy. Okay, so we're going to go in with this and then I'm going to show you. I'm going to clean that paintbrush up. I'm going to go in with kind of like this bright, intense purple. I'm going to go in and paint this. So I want you to see how I'm kind of separating out those sections, right? We're separating them out into other shapes. But the bright colors are going to make the shape of the hand. So I am going to keep painting. And I want to keep going and picking all different kinds of bright colors. And I'm going to fill in just the hand like a coloring book. And then I'm going to be back in just a moment to show you what my hand looks like. And it'll give you some time if you hit pause to just work on the inside of the hand with your bright colors. Okay, I'll be back in just a moment. So we're back. If you want to take a look, I've gotten the whole hand painted out. Some of these sections I might have to hit one more time because it looks a little streaky, but I'm just letting them dry. But as they dry, we're going to start the outside of the hand. And the outside of the hand, we are going to use black and white. You could use like gray and white or gray and black, but I'm going to go with black and white. We're going to go in paint these shapes outside of the hand now. Makes the hand really pop. If we look at the fact that we use bright colors and now we're just kind of using black and whites on the outside. We're gonna go in with this. just like a coloring book, like the hand, we're going to fill it all in. Here we go, just like that. And I'm just going to keep using kind of the same brushes, so I don't have to keep cleaning them. But I'll add some water and I'm going to add some white. So I'm going to put the white beside the black so I can just keep going black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. And you find that you're coming, and this is going to be black, and this is black, you can add one more line in here so you can kind of separate it out. So I'm gonna just go in with my white paint. And you probably can't see this part really well because it's primed white canvas. So it's already primed white, but I'm just adding white paint now. And you'll find primer and paint are two totally different mediums like you want to finish that primer off with the paint. There we go. And the reason it's primed too is so the paint holds on so it doesn't get kind of absorbed in parts of the canvas that are a little bit more porous than the other. So the primer just gives you that perfect surface to kind of start. It's like if you paint a wall, sometimes the wall's really a mess. You'll go in with the primer first, but you probably won't have to know that for a while. We're always painting our house lots of different colors. I'd like to do a few murals in my house. Maybe I'll videotape that. <laughs> 
and show you guys what we can come up with. My son helped me paint the headboard for his bed. I love to buy old furniture and redo it with some really cool paint. Same with like planters or anything we put in our house. We always have lots of fun with things and see how we can change it up. Okay, here we go again. So there's the black. And then I'm going to go back in with white. Like I said, you even could use a gray if you wanted another color in there. You just don't want to put a bright color because the bright color is the hand and we're trying to, to make it so the transition from the black and white to the hand is quite pronounced. Here we go. Oh, I can't wait to see the pictures you guys send me too. No idea how much I love seeing what you guys do. We're also different. We can take an idea and really change it up. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna keep doing the black, white, black, white, black, white. But like I said, if it ends up that this one becomes black, I can always change it up by putting a line in here so I can kind of make it so it's still a pattern all the way around. So I'm going to keep going with this. You keep going with outside of the hand and I'll be back in just a moment. So we're back again and I've got the background all painted up. And yes, I had to add another line because the black was going to be too much. So um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to play around with lines. So inside the hand, we are going to create our lines. So I'm going to put, I'm using a marker, but you can use paint. And I'm going to go all the way around the shape on my hand. I just like that. You might not want that kind of edge. And if you don't, that's totally okay. Then you just leave the paint against the paint. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm going to kind of pick a line to start filling in this portion, this shape in the hand. So remember, a line is, a, is from one point to another. And there can be lots of different kinds of lines. And I'm actually going to put two different lines in this portion. So I've got a straight line and then I've got a broken line. Let's do another broken line. And you, you can pick, you can do a wavy line. We're going to do all sorts. It's just looking to see what kind of lines can we create. So we're just going to do, I'm just going to do a bunch of broken lines now. And you can make them so they're the same, or you can make it so they're a little bit more staggered. Okay, so we're done that portion. So I think the purple, oh, it's still a little bit wet, but what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna show you this, is it's okay to flip your panel upside down. I like to do this sometimes, even if I'm working on my easel, if I kind of wanna look at something a little differently or kind of work on an area, and I can reach it a little bit easier if I move it around. So we're going to go into the yellow area now. I'm going to use that black marker. And like I said, you can always use black paint and try that. Try all sorts of things. So with this one, I'm going to try a curved line. All the way through this whole area, this yellow part of the hand. We're really breaking up these shapes, but because we have the bright color and the black and white, we still see the shape of the hand, right? Okay, let's keep going. Curved, curved, curved. 
And if you don't like it, remember I said, you can just paint over it and come back. So what other kind of lines can we do? Well, let's go into this turquoise piece. I'm gonna go all the way around. And I like outlining sometimes, but you don't have to, like I said, it's totally up to you. Or you could outline with a different kind of color, another bright color and see what happens. Try whatever. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do kind of a line like this, the zigzag line all the way down. So we're just really playing around with what can a line look like. So really it just means the pen is moving from one place to another. So how can you do that? Might change this up a little bit. It's not really following the same pattern, but that is so okay. Remember, if you don't like it, what do you do? You paint over it and you can change it. There, and I just added some straight lines. Okay, so let's try this portion now. Sorry, I think I hit the camera. I'm hoping it didn't bounce around too much on you guys. So I'm gonna outline this. Before I go in and do the purple, I'm gonna see. Is this part, well, it's kinda of getting more dry. I'm just gonna outline this too. Remember, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I always color in outside the lines. And I think it just kinda of makes it more special, more unique. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna do curved again. But I'm gonna do an all different kind of way. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna create a curve this way. Because these are lines. Now let's start over here. Give that a go. And you know what? I really like that pattern. So I think I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm going to start at the tip of the thumb. And I'm just going to change up the way I do that. I'm going to go over here. You know the one thing you can do too, is you can do little, on the lines, you could write little notes. I love, I use a lot of writing in my art. Sometimes, and I'm gonna have to teach you guys this later, I always say secret notes, where at the bottom of one of my paintings, at the very base, I will write one of my favorite quotes and I'll put it under the paint. And then, I layer the paint over top. Oh, that's a little bit wet. And then you can't see the writing anymore, but you know what's kind of neat is I know it's there. And I usually let my little, little boy, who is six, we kind of come up with these quotes. I'll show him what I was thinking of and he'll help me come up with some nice things that I like to say, or what that landscape, I do a lot of landscapes, maybe what that landscape means to me. I do a lot of landscapes from when I was a kid and like traveling around the province. I used to live in small town Saskatchewan all over the province. My dad was in the RCMP, so we moved every couple of years. And it would always make it hard. My parents would try really, really hard to get me into art classes everywhere we went. But sometimes we were in some pretty small towns, so it didn't always work out. I think where that is where this idea of creating the art club came into my mind that I think there's so many kids that enjoy create creating an art but not necessarily do all of us have the time to go to art class or we live so far away there's no way we could go so I figure we can learn art learn all sorts of things next week I'm so excited we are gonna be learning about Van Gogh. So once a month, I am picking something from art history and we're going to create an art project around that. So we're gonna do something called Van Gogh's Brush Strokes. And I don't know if any of you know who Van Gogh is. 
You might want to look with your parents at some information, but I've got lots of stuff to share with you next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is still a little bit wet here, so we're going to wait. Like I'm going to come back to that part. And then what I want you to do is if you look at the black and white, you can go in with a bright color, which I'm going to do, or you can go in with your black marker or black paint, or you could do white on black or black on white. We're going to go in and we're going to create shapes. So not just the lines, because the lines we kept in through the hand, we want to make it different. We don't want to create it so our, our, our eyes are kind of just like looking at all these lines. We want some visual interest. So that's why I'm going to change it up. So I'm going to do fun shapes. So I'm going to use, what's a cool shape? I love triangles. Triangles are cool. We're going to create some of these. And we've done that before. We created lots of triangles, if we think, on the first class we took on buildings. We put some triangles on the houses to create the roof. Or the second video, we created triangles for cat's ears. So if we want to look, shapes are everywhere. If you want to kind of look at some pictures or next time you go out, go look around and see what is a shape? What kind of things, like if you go to the grocery store, a cereal box, well, that's a rectangle, right? You can do all sorts of things. And then I think I'm gonna go in and just create little designs in the triangles. I'm gonna make little triangles and I'm gonna fill in. You just keep going, we're doodling but it's really kind of fun because it's setting off the hand from the rest. So yes, we've broken the hand up with lots of different shapes, but we can still see it. It's still a shape, even though it's got lots of other shapes. So it's playing around with that. I kind of like that, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take orange and I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna create little bubbles. That's a shape. They're circles, right? Okay, so next shape. What are we gonna do? I think I'm gonna go back into the white and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna use my orange and I'm gonna create a square. change it up a bit again. I'm going to keep going on with the squares here. And then I'm going to show you how you can go about doing this on the black so you can see it. But I'm going to go first of all, I think this pink is kind of cute. I'm going to do that circle dot thing again. So I'm creating little circles. And I'll maybe even put the circles in the squares for fun. So there is such thing as white markers, but they can be very messy. And usually what it is is there's paint in them, but there's no reason you can't take your little paintbrush with your white paint. I'm trying to think of a cool shape. You know what? We're going to just do circles. I like circles. I guess they're not the best circles in the world, but... I think they're kind of cool. Perfect. So we're going to just go around. And I think I'm always just going to keep some bright colors or some white, sh white shapes in that black area because then they really pop, right? That's kind of cool. And you know what's funny? Let's go like that and they actually look like bubbles. See? Kind of fun. Then I'm gonna just put some dots. Maybe make one of the bubbles right here. Heck, you could do that all over. Looks kind of cool. We all have different ideas. But I'm gonna show you something. 
So painting on black can be a little difficult because sometimes it's hard to see. So if you picked a really dark, where is it? I'm gonna grab some blue. What if it was a dark blue? Let's just create a dark blue with the black here. We'll create a darker, like shadow of the blue. We can see it, but do you see how we can't see it like we can see the white? Which you can kind of play with it too, right? Like you can look and say, what am I looking at getting out of painting something this color? Do I look for the, for your eye? Go, wow, look at that. Or do you want it to be less in your face and more subtle? So I'm kind of going in and I'm painting them like they're bubbles. And this is just an idea, but it kind of shows you that the difference between putting a dark color on black and putting a light color, super light and bright, like white or maybe even yellow would show up quite well. So I'm gonna keep working my way around and I'm gonna pick like just random shapes and I might use a couple shapes in each one. I'm gonna do the bright colors in the white and in the black, I'm gonna stick to white and maybe a color that kind of accents it as well. So like it's a little bit more subtle. I'm gonna work my way all around. So I want you to go, don't get overwhelmed. I just want you to go to the next shape and go, what's the first shape that comes to mind? A square. Okay, so I'm gonna do squares. Then the next one and the next one. So don't get overwhelmed and just keep working your way around. And I'm gonna be back in just a moment. Well, I'm back. I wonder what you have. This is what I have. So I've got my shapes. It's lots of fun. I'm gonna fix up this one line, the line portion. But do you see how we can still see the hand. And it's because of how we used our colors. If we had used bright colors in through the hand and throughout the whole background, on the background, like where the black and white is, you wouldn't be able to see what's the hand and what isn't. So that's what color can do. It can break things up where in the shapes where we need it to be broken up. Okay, well, I'm super excited. Please send me your pictures of what you did this week and I will see you next time.